now we talked about basically the system and where we're at. We're looking for more updates. There's a lot of broken stuff. Um, I don't know if you have an easy list for that, but I know there was like issues with 1200 milliwatts and having to go back to 700 and make the firmware work. And I there know are there are features issues that are missing. The, yeah. Yeah. There, there's just quite a few problems. But one of the one one of the things um, that that we saw as well uh, come through was some information about the inside of the goggles. Mm -hmm. So and this is this is coming from the WT the FPV WTF team. Do you want to real quick tell yeah. people who they are because it matters? Yes, yeah, so yeah. FPV WTF is a website you can go to, and it's also a uh, the the team Junus and the rest of the team there that went through and um, hacked the DJI goggles to get the root hack, so that we mm -hmm. could uh, basically yeah get root access to the DJI goggles, change firmware, and uh, dig in there and do all kinds of crazy stuff. By the way, that's in beta testing, and hopefully soon there'll be a browser version of that where you can flash mm -hmm. all your goggles and do all the magic stuff. But anyway. That's all happening, and they did the root on the DJI goggles. So, of course, the first thing they did uh, was get somebody to uh, share the goggles images with them and dive right in. So, uh, M. Bundy has credit here for for getting those goggles first and sharing them with with the group, um, mm -hmm. and he's credited in the tweet here. But yeah, basically, we see a Xilinx Vertex Five chip um, uh, that's right on the board there, mm -hmm. and so. Quickly, everybody ran around and was like, what the heck is this? Um, we've also got a uh, Magtech video link. That's the next video where Magtech discusses this, goes over a lot of the details, which I think are really, really good. He shows comparisons with like packages that we know from Xilinx, right? And mm -hmm. this doesn't match a single package that Xilinx right. has ever released. There, there's basically no way that this is a Xilinx chip. Yeah, the, the features also, of the Xilinx oh, chip w would not be able to do H.265, right, which we're pretty the sure thing. they are doing. Right. And there's no way that the, the Xilinx chip is a real thing. It's several mm -hmm. years old, and there is no way it has enough processing power to do the things that these goggles are doing. So not only yes. does it not look like a Xilinx chip, it can't be a Xilinx chip. So what that means is that yeah. whatever this is, yeah. they like lasered off the markings and lasered on some new markings for or reasons. Or they just have a different... Yeah, the IHS they have put on it was like, yeah, for whatever reason, the IHS has that on it. So you think you um, think it's possible the heat spreader already had Xilinx on it, and they just used the heat spreader? We just really don't I guess, know. That's okay. the problem with this. It we is so accuse, hard to know. We yeah. shouldn't accuse them of lasering the markings off since yeah. we have no. It could be actual it could be engineering samples. There could be lasering. There could be they could be fake marking them on purpose. They could own Xilinx IP that we don't know about. I mean, there's so many things that could be possible here. Basically, what we do know is that but it's it is not, not a that Xilinx. Chip. It's not and what a it Xilinx. Is, is, and what it is is what reported to you. What we reported to you on two weeks ago which was mm -hmm. the artisan chipset the FPV WTF talked about. Mm -hmm. So we know this is the artisan 9201, or we have a real good idea that this is the artisan 9201 because everywhere inside of this thing is yelling artisan 9201. When you go mm -hmm. dig through the files, when you go look at identifiers, you go look at naming, um, when you extract the firmware, basically everything inside the firmware says artisan. Um, and now, it matches up to what, what we expect to be an artisan 9201. This is interesting. Also, I think also a lot of layout, people... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. The layout oh. also looks like hubs and drones. Like there's a lot of pieces here that like this is very clearly artisan. So this is interesting because like I think a lot of people watching this don't have any freaking idea who artisan is or why we care. Yeah. And yeah. the reason we care is because the big question that everyone has been debating since this project was announced is, is this DJI inside? And it's more than just sort of morbid curiosity. You know, Drew. Drew from Rotor Riot was like, you don't deserve to know, or whatever his exact quote was. Yeah, you don't get to and, know, yeah. And his, his, I think he's confused, maybe, as to why people give a F. He, he said to me, I, I'll share this, even though it was in a private communication. He was like, do people, like, care what's in their TV? Do they care? Like, they just buy the TV and they watch the TV. That's not a direct quote. but And I'm like, one of the reasons people care is because it speaks to the future of the product, Right. And they want to yeah. know where this radical thing came from yeah. and it being an artisan chip. What does that mean? Because that answers that question, doesn't it? Yeah, 100 um, percent. Basically, um, for, from what we know from from the history, we, again, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You could check that out and that'll be going up on the Clips channel later on um, the original conversation we had about that. But basically, um, when you look back, it looks like lead core. You know, Legcore is basically a um, an SOC, and Legcore was a basis for the P1 chip that DJI used. So they could work with Legcore. They built the P1 chip that went into OcuSync and that makes our magic DJI FPV and the new mm -hmm. DJI drones and all that stuff. The OcuSync is the magic of P1. Mm -hmm. um, however, 
it looks like they also license that technology out to other people, including a company called Cuxon Microelectronics, who created the Artisan chipset. And the Artisan chipset is apparently based on lead core very similarly. However, it looks more advanced because it can do HD65 and has a little bit right. different uh, layout, maybe a different version or a newer version of it. Um, and uh, and yeah, so that's the Artisan 9201 is the chipset that we're talking about specifically, so, which is the one that's identified in here. So the, the, yeah. back, the back story is that I, I know I assumed that DJI had invented what we now call the P1 chip. We, I didn't know the name of it yeah. at the time. That they had invented this proprietary silicon that made it possible for them to do the amazing things they do with OcuSync and with DJI PV drone. And it turns out that they didn't invent it whole cloth, although I'm sure they had a big hand in making it what it was, but that an, a third company invented it and DJI had some maybe exclusive access to some part of it uh, because Artisan, the, the WTF, the w, the FPV WTF guys reached out to the company that makes those chips and said, Hey, can we buy them? Cause yeah. they're like, well, we'll make a goggle. And they were like, no, no, we don't sell. We only sell to DJI, uh, auto no, no, robotics. No. no, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Their response okay. was. We are already working because they asked Artisan, not Legcore. So when okay. they reached out to Artisan, Artisan specifically said, "We are already working with an FPV company." That was the response. Uh huh. Yeah, and they wouldn't sell to yeah. it. However, so, but but you're correct. The Artisan stuff is also used in uh, different drones, like the Hubson system. So all Hubson. the Hubson drones, yeah, um, have this. It's almost the same layout, actually. Yeah. As what is in the goggles, I mean, that kind of people are suspicious of that as well. Yeah. However, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. However, I, I don't need to, to set you. I know. <laughs> so I know. there's so so one thing we can talk about though is like um, it's even so close that Junus the FPWTF has created a tool that we have a mm -hmm. link to here uh, that's actually a firmware file extractor that works on all artisan devices and even works on Hubson drones because he developed it for the for the uh, okay. for these goggles. So yeah. um, it's that close where like it's just artisan and you know, it's all artisan stuff. So. I want to address this comment from Scott Milano because I look at this as vindicate. So, uh, Walksnail and Fat Shark said it's not DJI inside. Just, you yeah. and I tried to figure out based on our sources and just our gut instinct. And I think I can, I know I came to the conclusion that it was not DJI. They were not using DJI hardware. And I made a video. So I actually made that video because I wanted in the future to be able to look back at that video and say, did I get it right? Um, and now this comes out and I feel like it vindicates Fat Shark and Walksnail when they said there is no DJI code in here and there is no sure. DJI hardware in here. Now, Scott Milano says, what do you mean? They're using the same artisan chip that's it, that DJI uses. That's not true, though. DJI no, doesn't using... use the artisan chip. No, they're using a derivative from lead core which is also like the p1 was a derivative from lead core exactly so so it, it's like basically lead core got together with dji and designed a fancy chip for dji's video mm -hmm. then dji then lead core got together with cuxon microelectronics and developed the artisan chip for right. cuxon microelectronics to do their fancy so video. The same... that, that's the assumption that's the understanding it's not like the yeah. same this isn't like a differently labeled thing that led is like here exactly. you get this one named p1 and you get this exactly. one named artisan and you get this one named this it appears to be two different pieces of exactly. silicon that were developed in two different capacities for two different companies exactly now there's obvious similarities because you know if i bake if i make you a pizza and then the next day i make another pizza for somebody else those two pizzas are going to have a lot in common because I made them, yeah. right? And so there's there's obviously similarities and relationships between the artisan chip that's in the Fat Shark and the P1 chips that's in DJI. But I I believe sincerely that they were telling the truth and they should get credit for telling the truth when they said we are not using DJI hardware and we are not using DJI code. They have been vindicated, and if anybody was going to call them on that, it would be the FPV WTF team. They have no reason to defend them, and I think they should. A lot of people are really... I had somebody leave a comment, and he said, How stupid do you think we are? You're treating us like we're idiots by not acknowledging the obvious. And I'm like, well, how stupid are you? Because the evidence is there, and it supports the claims. I'm sorry. That's my take on it. I don't know. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a fair statement. I. I don't know. I think people okay. are uh, maybe people are upset they aren't right. I don't know what's going on, but 
but it it's clearly not DGI. It's very similar in technology, but we've seen okay. already like how differently it handles a lot of situations and yep. how differently. Oh, yeah. And if you really thought it was DGI, then why is the performance so much worse? Also true. Yes. Okay. Um, so All right. we also want to tell you, so the same team, SPV WTF, Junus and everybody that rooted the, um, the other goggles <laughs> actually got rooted mm -hmm. on these goggles. However, mm -hmm. this was a lot easier. Um, and this is goes to credit to M Bundy, M Bundy, who was digging around, who had his the original set of goggles. And um, he was actually able to guess the information. So he got root access to the goggles by guessing the password. He said they got correct. it on the second try. Yeah, that's uh, that's rough. <laughs> what was the password? If you had to guess. The password was artisan. Right. All so the first guess. they tried root root, and then they tried root yeah. artisan, and that was it. They yeah. guessed the password. So yeah. it's been hacked. Okay. Yeah. So they have root access to the goggles. Um, you know, so they can do fancy stuff with the goggles. They're already working on developments for that and seeing where they can go. Mm -hmm. Um. In addition to that, um, we've got some more tools coming out um, to kind of look at some comparisons. So we've got uh, Devil, we've talked about before, um, mm -hmm. has created a tool called um, a visual analyzer that takes the SRT data from your goggles and maps out the latency over time and a bunch of information. So we've actually got an imager link here um, from some info you provided. I got an, uh, it's a shot from Junus of a test that you provided and then also mm -hmm. a test that I Junus gave provided. SRT. Yeah. Yeah. So, so these are not uh, representative of the same test environment, but they're just an example of how the tool works and an idea of what the goggles may do. Um, from what I've seen, most of the DJI tests look like the second result. None of them look like the first one. So I'm interested to see more testing uh, from the changes in firmware. In other words, you're saying the DJI, DJI has a lot more consistent latency with fewer spikes. Yeah, Whereas so if we take the... a look, basically, yeah, we, we can see the spikes here. And those spikes are, you know, the left-hand side, that first line is 50, you know. So mm -hmm. so we're seeing those spikes go way up there. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. you can see down on the latency distribution, there's a high latency distribution. Whereas here with DJI, we're really sticking in a, in a, real, a pocket, you know. Yeah. They're just holding in a specific pocket, and you're not getting those giant spikes, yeah. which might be the stutters people are seeing in absolutely. the walkstone That's absolutely what so. it is. So, yeah. so in other words, walk snail still has room to improve on their on their stuttering and latency. Yes, and now if you um, want to check that out, or you want to test your DJI or walk snail with your SRT, um, that's a normalized tool that's available from Devil. So that's pretty awesome. cool. Awesome. And then last but not least, we have a couple links for you. If you wanted to check out um, the internals of the goggles, you know, we talked about them earlier, but there's also the internals of the VTX. We've got links to repair.wiki where you can find that information and others if you need it. Um, one interesting thing about the VTX is they did decide to laser off the VTX um, so that heat spreader uh, does not have anything on it. Um, mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, they decided to remove mm -hmm. that one, but, but keep the one in the goggles. So kind of interesting yeah. to see that as well. 